the total voltage at the resistive load V at Z equal L is equal to both the incident voltage V1 plus at L plus the reflected wave which is started which is generated as soon as the incident wave reaches the load so V1 minus at L likewise we can also write the current I at Z equal L the total current is equal to I1 plus at L plus I1 minus at L. Now remember that the voltage waves traveling on the transmission line with a characteristic impedance of Z naught can be related to the current waves on the transmission line. This means that we can relate the total current to the total voltage as follows. I can write I at Z equal L is also equal to V1 plus over Z naught for I1 plus and for I1 minus I'm going to have minus V1 minus L over Z naught. The minus sign here comes from the fact that the reflected current is flowing in the minus Z direction relative to I1 plus which goes in the positive Z direction. Putting all this together we can write the total voltage over the total current as being equal to V1 plus plus V1 minus at L over the current now, so V1 plus plus, sorry there's a minus sign right there, minus V1 minus all over Z naught, maybe I'll put a parenthesis there, and this is all equal to RL. Then if we solve for V1, solve this expression for V1 minus, this one right here, then we will get what we were looking for. So if we do that, we get V1 minus at L is equal to V1 plus LL times this coefficient RL minus Z naught over RL plus Z naught. Looking at this equation, we can define what's called a reflection coefficient at the load. That's this right here. We can define this as the reflection coefficient for the voltage at the load. So I like to write it with two subscripts, one V for the voltage and L for the subscript uh, st stands for the load. Note that the book ignores the V subscript, this one right here of the reflection coefficient, but I find it useful to include so that we can distinguish the load, the voltage and the load, the voltage reflection coefficient from the current reflection coefficient, which is not identical. So then we can write V1 minus is equal to the reflection coefficient at the load times V1 plus. So if we know V1 plus, we would be able to get V1 minus if we know RL and Z naught. And then we can use the ref voltage reflection coefficient at the load to determine the voltage reflected voltage amplitude. Okay, so getting back to the specific case that we have here, what reflection do we expect for this particular scenario? You know that RL is equal to Z naught.